right, so 2019 is coming to a close, and I just wanted to share some of my favorite comics of 2019. I read a lot of comics, like 10 to 20 or more a week, so I really just wanted to share my thoughts on what are my favorite books of the year. Initially, this was going to be a top 10 video, but uh, I really wanted to talk more about various books, so this is a top 30 comics of 2019. This is my own personal subjective opinion. I know some of you will disagree with various choices and some of you will agree with certain choices. Don't get too caught up on the order or placement of things. Don't tell me in the comments, I can't believe you made this number 25 and that number 10 or, uh, you know, I know I would have left off certain books as well. There's, it was really hard to even nail down a top 30, but yeah, this is what I thought are the top 30 books of the year. So uh, I hope I inspire some of you to go and check out some of these, these great, great stories. So let's dive into the top comics of 2019. All right, before I dive into my top 30 comics of the year, let's give some awards out for some of the bad stuff. Worst comic of 2019. Now, is this actually the worst, worst comic? I don't know, but it, but it was pretty bad what I did read of it. So, uh, worst comic of 2019, Female Furies by Cecil Castellucci. Initially, the premise seemed kind of interesting. It was a book about the female Furies, Granny Goodness's Furies. Now, Granny Goodness, she works with Darkseid on Apocalypse, building up his army. And this is about the female warriors in that army. But it really took some weird directions. In the opening issue, Darkseid coerces Granny Goodness into having sex with him. Mind you, it was a younger Granny Goodness, uh, a less disgusting fat Granny Goodness. But nevertheless, what a weird direction. The comic was like a weird hashtag me too, except with Darkseid. And it's freaking Darkseid. The dude is basically Hitler on a universal scale. Do we really care if he was a little bit sexually inappropriate with some people? Uh, also, in the opening issue, there was a bake-off competition for Darkseid in order for the female Furies to join his army. So just ridiculous all throughout. Um, I want to give another award out to my biggest disappointment of 2019. And that is Tom King's Batman. Now, Batman, you know, he's the flagship book for DC. Such an important character. And I have not really liked the run this year. Now, I was a fan of Tom King's Batman run initially, but this year, stuff has gotten really convoluted with Bane, Batman's dad from another universe coming over to this universe. There was also a seven-issue dream story arc called Nightmares, where Batman was trapped in his own dreams, and it just went on forever. Can you imagine the flagship book, and you're going to waste seven issues on a freaking dream? Anyway, I really dislike Batman, and I'm not the only one because DC ended up firing Tom King off of Batman. He's going to finish out his run, but it was cut short, and then he's going to uh, be given another book to sort of finish it off. But uh, biggest disappointment of 2019, for sure, at least for me. All right, now let's get into my top 30 books. Number 30 from Image Comics is Ice Cream Man by W. Maxwell Prince. This is a super trippy book. It's hard to even explain what it is because there's not much of an overarching story. There is a little bit, but there is basically this ice cream man and you don't know what he is. Is he a friend? Is he a foe? Is he a god? Is he a demon? You don't know. And he sort of messes with people, sends them in these dreamlike worlds with these messed up stories. And uh, each issue is kind of self-contained. And it's scary, it's, it's horror, it's trippy, it's weird, it's musical fantasy, it's drug addiction. It is just freaking bonkers, but very, very intriguing. A very unique book and definitely worth checking out if you like weird horror stuff. Number 29 from Image Comics is Die by Kieran Gillen. So in this book, you have a whole bunch of teenagers and they're playing a Dungeons and Dragons type game with their friend, and somehow they all get sucked into that Dungeons and Dragons world, and they're missing for a while, and then eventually they all come back, except for one person. One person is gone. They never, he never returned out of the Dungeons and Dragons world. 
and nobody knows what happened to him. Then we jump ahead many decades later, and all of those teenagers are now grown adults, and somehow they get sucked back into that Dungeons and Dragons world once again that they were in as teenagers, and that one friend of theirs that never came back with them, he's been in that world all this time, and he has sort of became the game master himself, and he's forcing his old friends to play with him once again in this crazy world. It's kind of like Jumanji in a way, but uh, with this messed up sort of Dungeons and Dragons style world with these made up rules. Very interesting. Yeah, this one is, uh, is a really cool, very unique book as well. Number 28, Lois Lane by Greg Rucka at DC Comics. This is not a superhero book. This is more of an exploration of Lois Lane as a character. We see her relationship with her husband, her work relationships, hurting some hard-hitting journalism type things. We see her teaming up with the female version of the question and trying to get uh, to the bottom of this mystery. We see some emotional moments between her and her dad. Her dad never approved of her relationship with Superman, so they have some differences of opinion. So this is a very fascinating book, exploring Lois Lane in depth, and uh, is definitely worth reading. Number 27, I'm just going to combine both of these books and talk about Brian Michael Bendis' Superman run on the Superman book, as well as on Action Comics. So there is some highs and lows of this, but it's pretty exciting to have Brian Michael Bendis stolen from Marvel, coming over to DC, and tackling Superman. A lot of his work on Superman is really good because before this, Superman was not written very well at DC for several years. But Bendis, he's really good at capturing Superman's voice and the characterization of the character, as well as uh, Superman's secondary characters like the people at the Daily Planet and Lois Lane. So Bendis really nails these characters and he really helps build the world of Superman. And there are some interesting adventures that Superman goes on through Bendis' writing. Now, where it's a little bit controversial and why I'm kind of mixed sometimes is for one, we have this new character, Jonathan Kent, and he is the son of Superman and Lois Lane. And uh, Bendis did a really good job introducing us to the character and making us really like Jonathan to the point where I was a big fan of the character. But then, through some convoluted story, Jonathan ends up aging, and now he's like a teenager, and now he's going a thousand years in the future to team up with the Legion of Superheroes. So now I don't really know what to think of, of Jonathan anymore. Another weird decision is that Bendis brought Jor-El back to life. Jor-El is Superman's Krypton dad, and somehow he's, he's alive and back in existence, and he seems kind of crazy, and he takes Jonathan on an intergalactic space adventure, and I don't know what to think of that, and I don't know if I really like it. Also, some of this crossing over with this event Leviathan story, I'm also a little bit mixed on. So while it isn't all a home run, I gotta give Bendis credit for making me enjoying reading Superman at least some of the time. Number 26, Mars Attacks by Kyle Starks over at Dynamite Comics. This is just a silly, fun book, very true to the Mars Attacks movie. It's about the son and his older dad, and they are just running around trying to avoid the Martians. And uh, yeah, very, very enjoyable. Number 25, Prodigy by Mark Millar. So an interesting uh, character in this book, this prodigy. He is a prodigy at everything he does. He can watch a kung fu movie and then all of a sudden he knows kung fu. He is just the smartest man and the best at everything and he is like a super agent and you get to see him do all sorts of crazy stuff and save the world. This was a highly entertaining romp by Mark Millar. Number 24, Batman Universe by Brian Michael Bendis. This is a really fun Batman book. Batman is often very dark and gritty and not fun, but this one was delightful. Batman on this adventure to find out what the deal with this mysterious egg is, and it takes him all through the DC Universe and through time. We have Vandal Savage in this, the Riddler, Jonah Hex, many, many characters. This is a really fun Batman story. One of the most fun Batman stories in years. Also, the artwork by Nick Darrington is gorgeous. Venom and Absolute Carnage by Donny Cates. So Donny Cates is really doing interesting stuff with Venom's 
whole backstory and lore and really sort of changing his origin a bit and what the whole deal with Venom is and what you think of Venom as a character. There's this whole world of Venoms and these this Venom God. It's just crazy bonkers stuff. The artwork's amazing. Uh, a really fun Venom book and one of the few must-read Venom series in uh, Marvel history. Number 22, Black Hammer by Jeff Lemire over at Dark Horse Comics. Uh, Jeff Lemire has been doing this Black Hammer book for years. It's this whole other world of superheroes, this very interesting story, sort of a commentary on superheroes. They're trapped in this dream farm world and they have to somehow escape it. This was a really fun book. Number 21, Spider-Man Life Story by Chip Zdarsky. So this was a interesting experiment. We are starting with Spider-Man in the 1960s, and each issue is set in a different decade of Spider-Man's life, and he ages in real time. So when we start in the 60s, he is basically in high school, and then in the next book, it's the 70s, and he's older, and then the 80s, he's older, and 90s, he's really old. And it's a really interesting exploration of Spider-Man as a character and his history, and it really goes dark. As the series goes on and you see that Spider-Man's life is not so great when it's told this way. So this was a really fascinating series, although I will say I didn't love the ending that much. But in the beginning, I was all about it. Number 20, The Green Lantern by Grant Morrison. So I'll be honest, this is series is not for everyone. It is not new reader friendly. It is very confusing, very convoluted, very high concept Grant Morrison. Every time I would read an issue, I would need to read someone's interpretation of that issue, and then I would have to go read about DC history and figure out who all these characters are. Grant Morrison, he would take an obscure character from 40 years ago that no one have remembers anymore, and somehow they're integral to the story. So unless you know that history, you are going to be a little bit lost. And it is very unforgiving that way, but uh, it's still very fascinating. And you got to give Grant Morrison credit for for doing what he wants to do and doing some of these crazy concepts. So I did have a little bit of fun with this series, although I can't recommend it to everyone. But I can recommend the art. The artwork in this book is gorgeous. And that brings me into my next award for Best Artist of 2019. And I'm going to give that to Liam Sharp and Steve Olaf for their work on the Green Lantern. The artwork in this book is just amazing. Looking at all these weird sci-fi galactic scenes and these weird alien characters. It, it's just amazing art and uh, I think worthy of Artist of the Year for Liam Sharp. Number 19, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man by Tom Taylor over at Marvel. This is not the main Spider-Man book. This is the secondary Spider-Man book, just telling local neighborhood stories. And not every issue has been amazing, but some issues have been really amazing. And some issues hit really hard. So um, I, I think this book is definitely worthy of being on this list. Number 18, Daredevil by Chip Zdarsky. So Chip Zdarsky, he took over the Daredevil reigns from Charles Soule, whose run I was a little bit mixed on. And I think Chip Zdarsky took the book in an interesting direction. Daredevil, he accidentally killed someone and he is eventually forced to sort of retire. The various superheroes kind of force him to do that. And now what is he going to do? So um, there's some highs and lows in this series, but uh, I think it was a very interesting change in direction for Daredevil. And I'm very curious to see where he's going to go with the character in 2020. Number 17, Amazing Spider-Man by Nick Spencer. Now this is the main Spider-Man book and uh, I think Nick Spencer, he's such a fun writer. He's so good at capturing Spider-Man's voice and doing funny things with the character and making him say the right lines. And he had some interesting storylines he did this year. Specifically, this one storyline with Craven the Hunter, that was sort of the big one this year. But even the sort of standalone issues are also highly entertaining. So Nick Spencer, great writer, Amazing Spider-Man, uh, much, much better than it's been in many, many years. Number 16, Shazam by Jeff Johns at DC Comics. So Jeff Johns, he is one of DC's best writers, although he's sort of semi-retired right now. He doesn't write that many books, but Shazam is really good. So the movie came out this year and the comic ties a little bit closely to the movie. It mirrors it a lot. So if you've just watched the movie, this book will be very recognizable to you. 
So Shazam and his whole Shazam family, they get sucked into this magical kingdom with all these different worlds. One is a world where animals speak like people, and the other world is a video game type world. And there's uh, so many different kinds of these lands. And uh, it's a very interesting adventure that we are on right now. So Shazam is definitely a book worth picking up. Number 15, Archie 1941 by Mark Wade from Archie Comics. I'm kind of a, a an Archie Comics fan. I always like to shine a spotlight on their books if they are good. And I really enjoyed this series. So the book is set in 1941. And it is a real commentary on the era of what life was like for a normal teenager in that time. Someone in high school th told through the recognizable characters of the Archie Comics world and uh it was a very interesting exploration of, of what that would be like you know we see archie jughead reggie betty veronica we have archie going to war and what is his experience during that time and how does it affect the people of riverdale really good book from uh, mark wade number 14 superman's pal jimmy olsen by matt fraction at dc comics uh, this is a very funny book. Jimmy Olsen is such a ridiculous character. He goes on such ridiculous adventures in this, but uh, the story is told in a very unique way. It's very funny. Uh, Jimmy, he's just jumping all over the DC universe a bit. He's dealing with Batman and Superman. And uh, yeah, hilarious book. We're only about halfway through the series. It's going to be 12 issues overall, but this is a really, really fun time in the DC universe. Number 13 High Heaven by Tom Payer over at Ahoy Comics. Nobody knows what this series is, but I was a fan of it. Ahoy Comics is a brand new comic company. They just launched about a year or two ago. And uh, I thought this series was really funny. So this guy dies and he goes to heaven only to realize that heaven is really shitty. Heaven is not that great. It's like living in a shitty college dorm room. And everything kind of sucks, and he realizes that he isn't in the good part of heaven because he wasn't amazing when he was alive. He is in the mediocre part of heaven, and there is a better part of heaven called High Heaven. And it's this character's adventures in this shitty afterlife. So definitely worth checking out if that sounds interesting to you. Another Ahoy comics book I want to shine a spotlight on is number 12, Second Coming by Mark Russell. So Mark Russell is one of my favorite writers, and uh, I thought this book was really fun. It's about uh, Jesus and the Bible, and we sort of have a parody and satire of the Bible. And then Jesus, he is sent down to earth in the current day, and he teams up with this random superhero of this world. And they sort of go on adventures, and uh, it's silly. It's silly, fun stuff, but it's also very hard-hitting satire commentary on the bible and religion and christianity and uh, this is definitely a good book if those are topics that interest you number 11 superman up in the sky by tom king this was a really fun small mini series uh it's a superman and he wants to go save this little girl that was kidnapped and taken off planet somewhere in the galaxy and there are arguments of if superman should be dealing with something as small as this because it might take him away from Earth for lots of time. Can he really be spending this much time off planet just to save one person? But Superman eventually does go off planet and he does meet this little girl. And there's various adventures out there in space. And we really have a good exploration of what makes Superman a great character. Tom King really nails it. And there are lots of very interesting conversations in this between Superman and the little girl. And uh, in my opinion, this is the best Superman book of 2019. So if you like soups, this is the one to get, and it is completely self-contained. All right, we're getting into the top 10 now. Number 10, I'm just going to combine all these books and talk about Jonathan Hickman and his various X-Men books, House of X, Powers of X, and X-Men. So the X-Men have been terrible for years. I mean, this year we even had an event called Age of X-Men that went on forever. Uncanny X-Men was published. Uh, weekly for a while there and there was just so much x-men stuff going on and so much of it was bad 
And it's so great to finally have Jonathan Hickman change the status quo for the X-Men and really put them in an interesting place. I'm not fully on board with all the changes for the X-Men. They're in a little bit of a darker place. They almost seem like they're bad guys in a bit in the way they are in conflict with the rest of the world. But you have to say it is an interesting direction for the X-Men. And I'm giving Jonathan Hickman his credit for finally course correcting with these characters and he's making it on my top 10 books of the year with his X-Men series. Number nine, Immortal Hulk by Al Ewing, also from Marvel Comics. So uh, I'm a little bit mixed on this now, but uh, still overall, I would say it's very good Hulk stuff. So trippy, so weird. So many times I'm reading this, an issue of Hulk and I'm like, what is going on? Why is Hulk dead in these various jars? And then he escapes from these jars and his body sort of remerges and it's bonkers. It's crazy. But this is one of the most interesting Hulk runs in years. Definitely worth reading if you're a Hulk fan. Number eight, Walking Dead by Robert Kirkman. So Walking Dead officially ended this year. It was even a surprise ending. We didn't know it was the final issue until the week of. The final issue is amazing. I absolutely love the ending of this book. In fact, it wins my award for best single issue of 2019 with Walking Dead number 193, the final issue in this series. It is so good how this series wraps up. I absolutely loved it. I'm glad that Kirkman stuck the landing with this series because The Walking Dead has been so important for indie comics and image comics. And we have that Walking Dead TV show, which is kind of getting bad right now, but it's great that the comic was at least able to maintain its quality for the most part. So uh, yeah, Walking Dead, fantastic book. Check out my video on Walking Dead number 193 if you don't mind being spoiled for the ending and you want to see how it wraps up. And if you watch the video, you can see why I think it is a worthy of best single issue of 2019. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Number seven, Red Sonia by Mark Russell at Dynamite Comics. Once again, Mark Russell getting another book on this list. Uh, Red Sonia, really fun. I've never read Red Sonia before. She's kind of like a female Conan the Barbarian in a slight way. And this book is really funny. We have this crazy villain who is this, this radical king and he's trying to expand his lands. And he's named Dragon the Magnificent. And he has this confrontation with Red Sonya and they're at war. And you see these two opposing camps uh, trying to combat each other. And this Dragon, he is so powerful. And Red Sonya... Her army is so small, so how is she going to outsmart him? I don't know how the series is going to end yet because it's not over, but so far I'm really loving it. Almost every single issue is great. It's just so consistent. This is one of uh, the best books of 2019 for sure. Number six, Doomsday Clock by Jeff Johns at DC Comics. So this is the whole Watchmen combination with the DC Universe, the sort of unofficial sequel to Watchmen, although it's very different than the HBO series, completely unrelated to that. This is about the Watchmen characters entering the DC universe, and uh, I've loved all the issues we have had this year. The artwork by Gary Frank is amazing, although uh, the publishing schedule for this book is a little bit disappointing. It's been going on forever, and it's still not done, but, but I've loved every issue, and uh, this is a great sort of event miniseries of doomsday clock and jeff johns is a fantastic writer number five war of the realms by jason aaron over at marvel so um i think this wins my award for best event comic of the year and this is one of the best event comics in years most events kind of are lackluster or not very good last year marvel had this one called infinity wars by jerry duggan which was horrible but this one was really, really good. It's very connected to the Thor world and Jason Aaron's Thor books. And it's about this guy, Malachi, this you know evil dark elf. And he wants to take over the various realms. And all the heroes of Midgard or Earth have to go and uh, battle him all across the galaxy. There was lots of tie-in books. And this was just a really fun event. And uh, if you haven't read War of the Realms, I, I recommend checking it out. This is one of the better events. Number four, 
Conan the Barbarian by Jason Aaron at Marvel Comics. I've never read a Conan the Barbarian book before, and I absolutely love this. This was my introduction to uh, the character outside of the movies a bit. And uh, Jason Aaron really impressed me. Uh, every single issue I've enjoyed pretty much. The artwork is pretty fun. Conan, he's such a fun character. The way he just battles everybody and lives for combat. And uh, yeah, this is great. I loved it so much. It actually inspired me to go check out Dark Horse's Conan the Barbarian books that they did years ago. And I've started reading those too. So this is a, a fantastic Conan book. One of the best comics this year. And uh, if you're into Conan or you want to learn about Conan, I recommend picking up this Conan the Barbarian series and giving it a shot. Number three, Deceased by Tom Taylor. It is all about uh, sort of taking more of that Marvel zombies concept and applying it to the DC universe. So the story is about Darkseid and his anti-life equation, making zombies out of everyone, and then it makes its way to Earth and transports to everyone through our technology and our various screens and our various devices. And all the DC heroes get turned into zombies and they have to fight back. And Tom Taylor, because this is an out-of-continuity book, he goes crazy with it. He kills various characters that you wouldn't think he would be allowed to kill in a DC book. And it's just very exciting. Every single issue is just super intense. So much fighting. So great. Um, I'm a little bit lukewarm on how it ended. But still, overall, I really enjoyed this book. And everyone's got to check out Deceased. So good. This was a, uh, a really big hit sales-wise as well this year. So number two, Wonder Twins by Mark Russell. So I really love uh, humor in my books. And Mark Russell, he's such a good satirist. He's so good at uh, that social commentary. And this Wonder Twins, he took these characters that I don't really know and most people don't really care about. And every single issue is just so hilarious and so fun. I freaking love Zan and Jaina now. I love exploring their backstory. I love seeing them in high school and then hanging out with the Justice League and getting started in their superhero career. It's just so funny. Every issue is just hilarious. So many running gags. Oh, this is definitely one of my favorite books of the year. If you haven't read Wonder Twins, please check that one out. All right. Also, uh, I'm giving my Writer of the Year award to Mark Russell as well. Not only for Wonder Twins, but also for Red Sonja for Second Coming. He also had uh, some interesting one-shots. There was this Ahoy comics book called Edgar Allan Poe's Snifter of Terror, and he did a story in there I loved. He did this Year of the Villain Sinestro special. He did this other series on the Lone Ranger. He did some other one-shots for DC. So for all these reasons, and for being so consistent, and every time I see his name on anything, I gotta check it out. I'm giving it to Mark Russell, definitely Writer of the Year for me. All right, number one, and my book of the year is Criminal by Ed Brubaker and art by Sean Phillips from Image Comics. So this is a series that has actually been going on for a while, but it relaunched this year. And I absolutely love the original series. And this continuing series is fantastic. So it's crime noir. If you like stories about criminals trying to pull off heists, trying to do some drug deals, maybe trying to do some sort of contract murder. This is the book for you. You can totally jump on on this most recent 2019 run, or you, or you can go back to the beginning. The stories are a little bit self-contained, maybe one and done in one issue, or maybe the last two or three issues, and then that character will go away, and then maybe they'll return several issues later and circle back into the story. But um, yeah, this is a good one to just jump into every so often. And I think the reason I, I got to give book of the year to this is because it is consistently good. There are maybe some other books that had uh, better individual issues, but this one is consistently fascinating and very entertaining. So uh, I'm going to give this one my book of the year. And one thing I do on my channel is summarize stories from their beginning to end. I've done it for Invincible and the boys. And one day I hope to do it for Criminal and cover the entire series. All right, those are my favorite comics of 2019. Leave a comment in the comments with some of your favorite books of the year. 
Also, I just want to end on this final question. Which company won the year? Uh, let's avoid the indies. Let's just talk about the big two, Marvel and DC. Who won the year creatively with the comics? Let's avoid money. Let's avoid the movies and the TV shows. It's purely on the comic books. Who had the better year creatively? Who had the better books? Um, I thought about it quite a bit. I think I'm going to give the edge over to DC. I just liked a few of their books a little bit more. I think they had a little bit more consistency. Also, Marvel publishes way more books than DC. And it kind of annoys me a little bit. Marvel's almost putting out too many books. I prefer a little bit quality over quantity. Although both companies put out some really bad books as well. But uh, I'm going to give the slight edge to DC. But I'm curious to see what you all think. There's a poll in this video you can vote dc or marvel see see what, what the people think but uh yeah so thank you all for watching and i will see you all again in 2020